This is a bit of an update video. Um, some of you have been sending me questions asking about the camera bag that I use. A few months ago I did a review video of it and that was after using it for about three months. It's been a year that I've had it now so we'll do a, another quick review. Um, I use the Low Pro Whistler 450 AW. It's quite a big bag. Um, you can put all your day stuff in this front section. So I tend to just put my drink, my like extra layers. So I've just got a hoodie there. Um, there's a gorilla pod. There's the chest mount for the GoPro. Got some gloves, some random sweets, um, some straps. Sometimes you use them to attach stuff to the outside of the bag. So they're just good to have in there. Um, so yeah, just like random little bits. Got a spare battery, contact lenses, quick release plate, and a, a spare trigger release. The good thing about this front bit is that opens up like I just did then, but you can open up this bit behind it, which gives you a little bit more room. So if you're taking big coats in winter, just gives you like that little extra bit of room. Um, some of you are asking about how much stuff you can get in there. And I can get pretty much everything I need for day trips. So all my layers, dinner, map, compass, um, that's pretty much all I take. I'm quite, quite simple in what I take. Like there's no point carrying stuff that you don't need. So I've always found it to be the right size. If you're going to do like a camping trip where you're away for two or three days, um, it might be a bit of a squeeze. I guess it depends on how much you eat and what the weather conditions are like, but for for day trips it's been perfect for me and on the side i put the tripod on um, there's two straps one at the top one at the bottom so i put this bottom one around all three legs and then this this one around two it just makes it easy to slide in and out so that just slides in this one goes across two And then this one goes across all three. It just like locks everything in. I like to keep all the heavy stuff closer to my back, just for like the center of gravity. Um, when I first got it, I tried putting it on the front here and it just pulled you backwards, which is like really annoying and it just makes life difficult. So putting on the side just gets rid of all that problem. And then on the inside, I've got this set up for vlogging and landscapes at the moment. So I've got 5D Mark III with a 24 to 70, 135mm, got some ND grads with the filter holder, got GoPro with the um, headband thing, got some spare batteries. Got polarizing filters for each of the lenses. Got a trigger release. Got spare batteries and things for tightening up the tripod. Just Allen keys, spare clips. And then another thing for the tripod, just to tighten up the legs. And then the thing I like about this is it's easy to reconfigure. So say I wanna do some wildlife photography so I tend to put the lens that I use the most well lens and camera that I use the most here and it's just easy to get to but then you could easily just move this around pull those out and then I can fit in 
the 7D Mark II with the 400 5.6 with like the lens attached into that side there. So you could take another lens with you. So stick that in there and then you can put your filters in as well. If you spend a little bit more time than that and you can like really get it fine tuned. And the reason I like doing that is, is all the other like little accessories, like the, all the stuff for the tripod. Cause when I was going between bags, I found that I'd often leave the, like the, this thing for tightening up the tripod in one of the other bags and then it would break and then it'd be like, now what I'm going to do. So it just gets rid of all the excuses and answers all the problems. Um, so I've, I've never had a problem with space in this section. If anything, I take too much because of this, but maybe you're a bit more um, sensible than me and don't want to carry it. The other thing in here was this cover. I had some answers off you about what this was after I did the last video and it just goes across here. And apparently this all lifts out. So if you're going onto an aeroplane and the whole bag doesn't fit into the luggage, you can take that out and take it on carry on. Or it's just like an extra little layer of protection from like the elements, but um, I've never used it. It's like an extra thing that's in the way of getting to your camera. So if that was zipped up, you'd have to unzip it and then get your camera. Whereas if it's not on there, you can just rip it open, get your camera and then go. So that's the insides. Had a few questions from you asking about what the space is like in the front compartment. And I've always found it big enough. I only really do day trips or like, say I want to photograph the sunset or sunrise. I just either walk up in the dark and then walk back down again. I, I don't really take camping stuff with me yet. Um, I might start doing that, but it's going to get really heavy once you start adding a tent and like two or three days worth of food and drink. But it would be possible. When I first got this, I did have to fill my old bag with weights and then just walk upstairs until my legs got used to it. It was like a, like a month of pain after I got this, thinking about it. It was worth it though. Now you don't really know it's there. The other thing that some of you asked about was, was it worth the price? And I'd say it was. Um, I think I got a, a good deal on it when I got it. It was like just over 220, I think it was, which does sound expensive. But when I've been looking recently, it goes up to about 280 sometimes. So I'm not quite sure how Amazon works. So just keep an eye out for the lower price and then get it then. I'll link it down below in the description and I'll, I'll link my last blog post as well because I've got some photos of the insides so you can like look at it better then. That's the point. Some of you were asking about the straps last time as well and they're quite heavy duty ones. So I've not had any problems with them. You can get them quite tight on onto your stomach and onto your chest. So I found them quite helpful actually. If you use this waist strap, it looks kind of nerdy, but it puts all the weight onto your hips and it just makes your shoulders feel a lot better. Um, I, I don't know how it works, but having the weight here just balances it all out and it just makes the day go a lot easier. Another question that I got was asking about, um, well, it was more of a complaint to be honest than a question. They were saying about how rigid these bits are. I'm not sure how well you can tell this on the video, but these are quite hard on the sides. And it just means that if you fall, it protects it quite well. I'm quite an accident prone person and I've, I've tested it out 
not not because I wanted to, but just because I'm I'm quite clumsy. Um, landed on it quite a few times when we went skiing. I've fallen on it walking down the screes. We're walking down Great Gable, and um, yeah, it, this held up better than my neck did. And we we're walking up on where were we? Crinkle Crags. I went to throw a snowball at my dad and then I slipped on the on the snow up there and my arm hurt but nothing moved inside the bag. I've, fall, I've fallen quite a lot to be honest. I'll probably try and find a few of those and put them in for you because they're quite funny to look back at. I hit the deck before and bleeding. Still got all my teeth though, so yeah. Some of you don't like how rigid that is because it means it's quite hard to squeeze equipment in. So if you see how it's quite tight up here, it's it's quite difficult to squeeze that lens in. I tend to just put the lenses in on their own without the lens caps and then I'd sort of put that in there and then put the batteries inside it or something like that just to work around it. I think the rigidness is worth the compromise for me because it just means my equipment doesn't break. Like, I don't, I look after my stuff but I don't baby it and like falls happen. They just catch you off guard sometimes. But for the most part, I, I don't think much has changed in my opinion since the last video. I'd still recommend this. It's had quite a beating over the last year and you can't really tell. That's the marks on the bottom and then that's the sides. And other than a few marks on the inside, it looks like a new bag. There's just a few marks on here where the um, camera hot shoe it's just been scraping on this material. Um, that's not really a big problem to me though. Just looks a bit, it's a bit fluffy. Uh, still haven't worked out what these things are for. I still think they're a bit pointless. It's probably for SD cards. Yeah, well it's got a picture of an SD card on it, but I wouldn't use that. So yeah, that's the update. Still recommend it. Um, I'll put a link to it down in the description, but feel free to ask any questions and I'll try and answer them. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I've answered them in the last two videos about it. Because last time we showed how, how quickly it was to get the camera out and everything. So yeah, after a year of using it, I can still recommend that you'd probably like it. Um, there is a smaller version of this that I know other people have got after watching the last video and they like it. It got really dark. So it just depends on what you're after. It's either the 450 or the 350. But I hope you found that helpful. If you want to see it in use, it's in pretty much every video since that last update. So if you want to see what it's like, then I'll link a few videos where it takes a bit of a beating so you can see it better there. But I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you next time. Venture bud. Clear you a space. Going in.